All right, guys. Three bucks. One day. One day same tree. Same tree. Oh my God. I'm so cool. Woo! Holy oh, shit! Get a shot of these. <laughs> Two farms this year. Number one is done. Did you say bye, Kevin? I did. I already did. Bye, Kevin. Bye, Kevin. Bye, Kevin. Bye, Kevin. Smoke it, buddy. Look at that. You destroyed it. The shop is closing up. Make sure he takes all his right antlers. All right, guys. Welcome to the Deer Shop Podcast. Presented by Simon Brothers Outdoors and the Leaky John Boat Company. And this is the very first shop talk. Basically, the first six or seven episodes we've had have been themed. And there was a video to go with it or a film or something predating it. And instead, today, we're just hanging out. We're drinking whiskey, drinking beer. Yeah, we got some guys here hanging out. So we thought we would take advantage of that. Yeah, there's five of us here today. Ryan Freeman. Alex Argerakis, Ethan Simon, Isaac Simon, and myself, Caleb Simon. We are all here just kind of shooting the shit today. We're going to talk about some old stories. Yeah, we got old stories. That maybe uh, us. Yeah, old stories. Maybe talk a little bit about our season coming up. Uh, for anyone looking or really caring, it's August 13th. Don't know when this is going to air. Probably sometime in September. Most likely sometime in September. Sometime in September. Don't know what episode it's going to be. But it's August 13th. We've been doing some deer season prep. And Isaac's, how many days till you leave? I am leaving in two weeks. Two weeks. Isaac's leaving for one month. Montana, four tags, the whole gamut. You've already heard those podcasts talking about that, so we don't have to go into it. So today's just shop talk time. Uh, Should we go around the room, kind of talk about what we got going on right now? Yeah, let's. Uh, I mean, obviously the we'll audience start probably with knows. Isaac, what four tags do you got? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I already talked about it a little bit, but I have a Montana mule deer, elk, antelope, and a black bear. Black bear is kind of a leftover tag. No, I want a... you to fill that black bear tag more than anything, yeah. so you can from, salvage. From the, from you the need to salvage our black bear film. Yeah, because without that, our film is going to be boring. But if you kill one, that'd be awesome. Is mountain lion even? I don't know. I haven't done a any chance research for you because I know. You, I think. I think you have to draw sure have it. To, I don't know if you have to draw it, but I know when you hunt them, there has to be snow on the ground. Oh yeah, so that's not going to happen because I'll be there in September. Well, you go high But I, I could get a wolf tag. So yeah, I could which part of the tag. state are you going to be in? We'll be in the whole state. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Reveal I'm, your secrets. Where, yeah, where I'm starting to hunt, you can literally see the border of Wyoming and South Dakota, and where we end, you're probably going to be able to see Canada and Idaho. So I tell so the we're guys going the whole way. I tell everything. the guys at work what you're doing, and they're just like, "What do you? What are you talking about?" I'm like, "Okay, he's going to be gone for a one month, and it's just like picture Montana as the as Medina County. One day you hunt here, one day you hunt there, two days you hunt here. Like this farm's hot. That's the entire state for him. Yeah, and just with driving the, with this driving, general tag, driving. you can hunt. It's not the entire state, but it's kind of like units throughout the state, and literally. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to hunt where I could see South Dakota, and then go all the way to Idaho and hunt there, and then everywhere in between, basically. That'd be sweet. Yeah, I am pumped for that. We don't need to talk about me because I'm just gonna be deer hunting here in Ohio and maybe Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Indiana. Not very exciting, but we've had him on a podcast before, but we haven't talked about his plans at all. We're gonna go to Ryan right now, Ryan Freeman. He's been a member of our group for ever and i'm basically talking him into buying a camcorder setup so he can start filming all his hunts really yeah he's just gotta do it i don't understand like he's just a guy that shows up and like we go track one of the deer he kills 106 incher and then like <laughs> that's his video for the year besides the parties but like he deserves more than that so he needs to buy a camcorder and a tree arm and he can just do the whole gamut he he's a guy that has me. the ability there is some potential yeah he told me about two weeks ago he said he wasn't going to buy any camera film yeah, gear. well, I'm talking them out of it. And there's two flies on the cameras right now, and I'm going to kill them. Yeah. So we're nuts. talking about, like, game tags that people have for their different states and the different things that they're hunting. But I just got a game tag for a child on the way. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we're talking about life. So yeah. this is a big life. <laughs> so, we, uh, so this is your life. last year. We so have recently better... uh, just found out that yeah. we are going Cheers. to uh, be having our first Cheers. child. Yeah. So the Freeman family is growing by Uncle. one. Ryan and Gina. Yeah, Alex gets to become... 
uh, an uncle for like the thirteenth time or whatever. For well, um, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. As seven. well as every man in this room <laughs> does. But time. no, yeah. I mean, I got some pretty good plans for this year. Uh, two farms that I will be on year two of. Um, was lucky enough to get some permission close to my in-laws, bordering properties. Um, have some had some pretty good deer on it in the last few years. Um, last year fell a little bit shy on a buck that I wasn't quite sure <laughs> you got uh, what I was shooting that, at. You got um, excited and that's okay. I always believed in a terrible mantra and it was, you didn't need binoculars if you were going to shoot yeah, it with a bow. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. Well, you definitely Unbelievable. need binoculars. I ended up finding myself in a situation where I had a three-year-old buck that did not uh, come out to class where I wanted him to be. Uh, I luckily 10 punched him, 10 ringed him. I uh, didn't run more than 50 yards, but when we got up to him and the coyotes were done ravaging the our entry hole. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of it. We watered it out. The size yeah, they, yeah we done. Videos, they were just they, waiting. Yeah, we could yeah, see them yeah, when we got done with that. But no, there's some pretty good pretty good deer that we've seen on those two properties. So uh, we're hoping to make something happen this year pretty good on one of them. Yeah. So, so and that, I'm, I'm totally open to uh, putting investing some money in. Yeah, we got to get you filming. So, yeah. Nick gave you a really hard time this year. Well, um, we did a lot of filming last year preseason. We haven't done any this year, and just because we've been so busy. But we did get we had a pretty nice story with yours last year, and we got recovery. You know, we got recovery video, and it it worked out pretty well. Honestly, obviously, you were not happy with the size, but it was it was good. And ground shrinkage happens, especially. Yeah. It was your first year really bow hunting in a while. In a while, yeah. Probably you got a, back. You got really back into it for the first time in a while, and you did a good job. So, yeah. it didn't score massive, but none of us killed giant bucks anyway. Yeah, so it was a fun and simple track job yeah. too. Like yeah. straight into we the had coyotes, shoulder high beans. Decent group. I mean, coyotes literally ate the ass out of this deer, and they're sitting in the yeah. field. And, and I had video. my son and his yep. buddy with us, and they're like. They're looking at us. I'm so like, I got yeah, video to not show, doing we, anything. It we got video to show of the coyotes yeah. watching us drag the deer out. Yeah, we walked was. right past them. And those beans were the greenest beans for October in the history of green beans in October. Yeah. It's awesome. But All right, Alex, it's your turn. So this year I'm still kind of keeping it pretty simple to what I got to work with. Like, I've been hunting at my in-laws for, since 2016. I've. There's been some giant bucks over there. They're there. They're there. Uh, I've finally developed their pattern when they come through there. Like it's kind of a pass through, especially during a rut. So I'm gonna have to hit the rut hard. Yeah. And that's what I've been saying the last couple of years. Yeah. And of course, this sh- last year I uh, decided, like November sixth, like oh, I'm gonna go to this other spot and <laughs> it's gonna be warm today. There's a- not gonna be any deer there, and that big ten point showed up, perfect broadside shot. But so we should like you know the podcast that we just recorded, which I don't know which in order it's gonna air with what the audience is listening to. But we just talked about how it, it doesn't need- necessarily have to be the best day. No, for yeah. the biggest deer to get killed. Yeah, I mean, like I was saying on that one, it was like a is going to be a very warm day. It's like seventy something, November six, and I was like, oh, I'll go to this other property that I haven't been to. It's like a long, narrow property with a lot of hills and woods around me, but there's a lot of properties that I can see side to side of the property that I'm on, and see the other side of the next property both ways. And I put a camera up and up there and went back there and there was a blind tree stand, three feeders and stuff when I got back there. So I was just like really upset about it already. I'm like, typical Ohio. Yeah. I'm not going to see anything. And I get back there and these does come flying through. And next thing you know, there's a side by side, another guy just cruising around on his property. Then, Warm weather in November, you should know. Yeah. Well, t- weekend especially or probably warm the weather. weekend, I'm sure. Yeah. Weekend no, or warm weather, it's I just. Remember. I don't think it was the weekend. It you might have deal been. with the firewood no, cutters. No, I think. Yeah, it was. It was a Sunday. Yeah. You got to deal with the walkers, the firewood cutters, the nature lovers. The... Well, that's why I went there just to see because my main spot, <laughs> there's dogs. leaf blowers blowing all day. Dogs. Yeah, and dogs. <laughs> That's another story. Yeah, we'll talk about that some other time. Um, so I was sitting there, those deer, those does came blowing through. 
get a notification from my cell cam, look at it. The worst. And he was there. I'm like, Ugh. these things are the devil. So I left there as soon as I seen that because it got blown out. I got people over there, and the deer that I was after was at my other stand. But yeah. it is what yeah, it is. We can talk about how cell cams have kind of changed the way we hunt a little bit and how it's come back to bite us in the ass a little bit too yeah so our, our last podcast which you didn't sit in on and I, they'll probably order they'll probably be released in order but even if they're not the freak daddy podcast you can find it legendary deer stories everything that happened in that podcast was pre-cell cam and it was it was poetic and beautiful and awesome and fun but it was not good for actually killing a deer in real time data this the, the cell cam game has changed everything back then like we talked about Someone sees a buck. Oh, Anthony Anthony saw a giant while he was <laughs> picking tomatoes in his garden. Yeah. And it's Split a big deal firewood. because, like, oh, man, Freak Daddy must have been here on this day, so he must be over here now. You know, now that we got cell cams, you know. We know a, exactly when, you know, live data of yeah. where these deer are and when they're there. Yeah, like, but I like, think but they like, could also throw you off a little bit. Yeah, oh, because they're throwing so, us off a lot. So there's a, guy, there's a guy that hasn't appeared on the podcast yet, and he will eventually appear, and his name is Nick Schlau. Okay, <laughs> and he, this dude, you know, one of our, obviously one of our great friends, one of the deer shop guys, you know, he's been a deer shop guy since high school. He'll be here every night. He'll be yeah, here every night in the fall. But he is a guy that if the camera doesn't show his buck in daylight the day before he's with the right wind him, yeah, with the convinced right himself that that deer is not there and luckily he has done you know we have actually talked about this year he's going to change his tactics up a little bit because he relied too much on what the cell cams were telling him and not enough about what is just actually happening in the woods but you don't want to fall part of that trap yeah cuz these deer avoid this cell yeah. cams just as much as they avoid you he's in also got like, because, kids and stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah but so. he there, you know, there was times where he didn't hunt because let's it wasn't, not give him too much credit. <laughs> it wasn't no. the right this or that. It is Nick. I mean, me and Isaac killed bucks back back this year, late January, and those bucks didn't show up on cell cam for two, three weeks before we killed them. Yeah, like my back buck was nights. gone for weeks at a time. Yeah, yeah so like, yeah, so you guys killed your back to back bucks, and the great part was, so it was Isaac first, right? Yeah, Isaac kills his buck, you know. Wax it, perfect shot, dies within 100 yards, blood everywhere. We go track it, have a party in the woods, etc., etc., etc. It's right there. It's on the wall right yeah, behind us. And it's a mature deer, six, five or six year old deer minimum. You know, he doesn't have the size, but he was a mature deer that had been on the farm for a long time. We knew, have a lot of history with. The very next day, Ethan goes back to the same stand and kills a, it was a younger deer, but yep. it was a good deer. We don't have the mount here yet to show off, but it was a good deer for Ethan's first buck. Killed it from the same stand where we were all. We're at 15 minutes, so I can say fucking around <laughs> prior to Scoot the, the fuck night before. The <laughs> we were fucking around there you go. prior to uh, that, you know, Ethan killing him. And Ethan killed a deer that night, so we had back-to-back tracking parties. They died 20 yards From the other. same stand, they died 20 yards apart. Yeah, so. that was the first time I've ever had crossing blood trails in the yeah, woods, too, so that's right. pretty cool. Yeah, that, that's that, kind of crazy. And there was snow, so the yeah, snow Yeah, fresh helped. snow on Isaac's night, and then... Yeah. Yep. But yeah, regardless. So I don't so, give a shit what those cell cams say. Deer are moving around. Yeah, so what's we, going on with you, Trash? Just, I mean, I'm back into the hunting scene. Just bought a bunch of new, bought a saddle, new sticks, new backpack, new bunch camo. Bunch of cell cams. Bunch That's of cool. cell cams. He's, just trying to get back into it. And you're spread out. You're hunting some public. You're hey, hunting ours. Ethan, mm-hmm. maybe next time Caleb uh, takes you out to Pennsylvania, shows you how to Hang some cams, yeah. Some cams. I went and hung a cell cam, and I get a test photo every day of it pointing to the sky. Yeah, he went. To, <laughs> he, went he went. He drove three hours to our public land spot in Pennsylvania, where we trout, fish, and turkey hunt, and bear hunt, and et cetera, et cetera. And he <laughs> he hung a cell cam, walked away because it was like I. I didn't have any service on my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he like blah blah blah. So the cell cameras on a different network than a cell phone to so everyone else. He gets back to the cell phone on a. On his drive home, checks the picture, and it's literally just pointing to the sky. Like, you can see, like, one leaf and then skyline, and every once in a while, a deer walks by and looks down at it. <laughs> it's bad. So now, now he gets a notification every day of his yeah, I mean, shitty trail camera placement. But he's got cameras in two states right now, mm-hmm. public, private. You have actually you got on a good public land buck, which is impressive. Yeah, if anyone's listening, they know exactly where the public land is around us. No, house. not necessarily. There's, there's public land all over the place, yeah. but you're in good shape. There's a we'll big draw coming up next month. There is. Yeah, who yeah. applied for that? 
not me. I don't think any of us. Uh, actually, we no, are going to There's apply. another draw. I don't think we're you talking about, about the county draw? Yeah, the county no. draw. Do you want to no. get in on that with us? Yes. Because I guarantee you Nick's I'm not going to do it. Nick's not going to do it. I'm in, but there's one out of the county that way. Yeah. September, middle of September. The one west. So we did the Two public... major roads west. Yeah, you yeah, have to yeah. be yeah. there for the draw. Well, so for our county draw, we can talk about that. Our county draw, we did it two years ago. It was me, Luke, Ethan... Or no, nope. it was me, Luke, me. Matt, and Nick, right? Not even you. Nope, I was because I was, it was me, Luke, Matt, and Nick. We got a, we got a public draw for our county in our township, and it was it was all right. I mean, we we did kill a doe. We we got some show camera pictures of some decent bucks, but we didn't really do much with it. But I guarantee you, I mean, there's no point in having Matt do it. Love you, Matt, but you know, married, living in Ashland, etc., etc. Not gonna be here. Not gonna be here. And Nick's not gonna do it again. There's no way Nick does it again. So we might as well just kind of pattern up and see yeah, what we can do. I'll fill the freezer. And they want they want does to be killed, and then there's an opportunity to a good deer or a good buck, obviously. But yeah, it's pretty cool to be to do a draw a draw somewhere that's five minutes from your house. Yeah, we didn't do it last year because I think we kind of felt like you know lat you know we did the so we did it in 2021. And had the success that we did. There was a video of it, et cetera, et cetera. 2022, we didn't do it because we felt like it should be something that was done by people who don't have good opportunities. But I think this year, I think we should get back in the game, see what happens. I'm assuming we'll probably get a draw. Maybe not, but. Yeah, and who knows how this draw goes if yeah. more people apply I kinda for wanna, it. I kind of want to get a spot away from our township. So we got a spot in our township last year. We were getting deer on our camera and our draw that we had on our private farms. So it was like cool, but. Almost too it was close just to an home. extension, yeah. Yeah, it'd be cool I, to go I, northeast. Yeah, let's get a spot somewhere far away and like get some wild cards in. City uh, deer. City, yeah, yeah. city deer. That's a different podcast. Park deer. We can talk about it a little bit if you want. but <laughs> Oof. Free for all. It is a free for all. Different strokes for different folks, right? It is a shop talk. And we're in an interesting location where we can be hunting farm bucks here and you drive 15, 20 minutes and you're hunting city deer. And sometimes not even that far. Yeah. There's spots... I'll just say I'll, I'll I'll give away a little bit of information, but there's no, a spot just... we could draw close to my father-in-law that would be <sighs> primo. Yeah, it's technically village deer, not city deer, but well, and there's some real interesting situations where these city deer, these deer that live in people's backyards, go one block over into a soybean field and they're way out in the country. Well, we talked about yeah. it in the last podcast. We have a deer right now that's moved 2.76 miles into between bean fields in just a couple weeks yeah two points in the summertime this isn't even the rut yeah what are you supposed to do about that man there's nothing cry nothing you can do about that when there's 57 hunters in between you and that cross your fingers he's technically not a buck i'm gonna shoot so it'd be nice to see him grow up yeah he's a deer that's in the three-year-old category and needs to grow he's technically he's a hundred i mean he's 128 inch three-year-old with splits and he needs to grow yeah we just we have two of those we actually have two bucks that are like 125 to 130 inch they're three-year-olds three or four maybe two and they need to grow they're just deer that i'm not going to shoot this year nothing on anyone but i'm not going to shoot those deer this year Oh, the one that you keep getting pictures of? Yeah. There's a deer I have pictures of every single night at the same time. I'm actually surprised I haven't got him yet. It's pretty close to the time he shows up. He's got splits. He's a 10-point. He's an 8-point with splits. Well, that just goes to show how these deer, how they're smart enough to survive all the different hunters out there yeah. for all these years. Yeah. So these deer are running past 50 different corn piles and 50 different hunters, <laughs> and <laughs> somehow they don't get killed. You know who has the best corn? <laughs> Alex has the best corn. Alex has the best corn. <laughs> sensational and almost yeah you could say but yeah so that's ethan's story he's getting back into it this year he's gonna getting he's gonna heavy. give us some new perspective on some things he already took the initiative to go to pennsylvania and hang cameras which isaac has hunted pennsylvania deer season in the past without cameras just on a whim but ethan's gonna set up out there we were actually supposed to be there yesterday but storms came in so we didn't go he's kill bitched out it's okay. i did but it there was, was tornadoes it was in the torna- area. It was literally tornadoes on a mountain. Why would I drive three hours to be- deal with that? Yeah, then have to turn around and drive back home. Yeah, fuck that. But that area you're hunting in Pennsylvania. <laughs> hopefully, you can get up there a few times. Yeah, there's yeah. lots of deer. I'll go with you. Lots of bears. I'm, I'm open. Lots of deer. Lots of bears. Isaac's been there. Seen deer. Seen bears. Yeah, I've, seen, an awesome I've time. seen bears there. Lots of turkeys. Lots of gobblers. I mean, it's we love it. When are you going? Uh, for that unit, it opens September 30th, so it opens with Ohio season, and then it's open till October 24th, 
I think. Uh, only open till October 24th? Yeah, it's the same as the Bear. No, 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 no. Or is no, it November? No, 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 no. You're way wrong. That's open. <laughs> that unit's open all year. Yeah, it's the, bear the end of November. Se- the Bear season's only open, I believe, till November 4th. Okay. It's the Deer season that's open throughout. Yeah, it's just deer. Pennsylvania's yeah, really so confusing. So Deer season's open throughout. There's a lot of different seasons. There are antlerless seasons. We're now using season tags. in between. You so, can't hunt Sundays. So we wanted yeah, to. Yeah, you can't, can't hunt Sundays. Well, there are some Sundays. That yeah, you there's can't like one. So we wanted to go up. Our, our plan was, since we know there's a lot of black bears in the area and big black bears. Isaac got video of three different black bears last year, 200 plus pounds, like legitimate black bears in, in bow range that he couldn't kill. Yep. We wanted to go up there and hunt deer and bear at the same time while they're both in so season. So there's only a specific timeline where the, both those seasons are open. Overlap. Which lap. Yeah, and normally it wouldn't be a big deal, but we're going to spend six days in Indiana this year. So when we get back from Indiana, which is 1029, we have our public land YouTube meetup. When we get back from Indiana, there's only like a week where we can get out to that Pennsylvania. All on the weekend. Yeah, we can only get out to Pennsylvania and hunt bears with our archery equipment and deer after the Indiana hunt. But the Yeah, big, we have to time it just right. Yeah, and basically. the big problem with all of this is it's during Ohio's best season. So it all depends on what happens in Ohio. If one of us kills a good slammer in Ohio prior to the rut, we're going to be spending all our time out of state. If I kill a deer in Ohio early season, I will be in Indiana or Pennsylvania or West Virginia for all my hunting. Or I'll be filming the guys, obviously. But if I have time, which I will because I don't work in the fall, I will be out of state hunting one of those places. Yeah. Have you talked about your fall at all? How you're off work for ever? No. How long? So I am on my 17th trade now. So I just made my 17th trade yesterday at work, which means I will probably not work between October 7th and December 10th. So the only thing you're doing is just making making it so you have no excuses. I make it so that I personally I cannot miss I cannot not be present for something that happens good within our deer hunting lexicon. So because of that, I don't work in the fall. Simple as that. I will so, say we also But I work my my summer sucks. So like tomorrow morning I start a 48 and then I work Thursday then I work a 48 over the weekend. So I work 5 24 hour shifts in the next seven days. We also don't have like nine weddings. Yeah, so this is the throwing first throwing a yeah, wrench thing. into. No, what? Do we have any weddings? I know Ethan's no, and Nathan, I'm not, Nathan's wedding a weekend before. Oh, open weekend day. before. I'm not going to any. Lindsay had a wedding she was going to for a girl at work, but she decided because of like boarding the dog and this and that, and me being gone at work and Airbnb that we're not going to go. So I'm not, I have no wedding. I don't think I'm going to a wedding this year at all. Same I know what? that like Nick and Tyler's weddings were a little bit earlier last year, but they still kind of like threw a wrench into it. Like, I was in nine weddings last year. Like yeah. Six. Dylan's wedding I, last I, year? I went to nine Dylan's weddings. Dylan's was last year. Opening, he was October. Opening, opening this. Was it? The end of September or open. October? It was, it was October. October. Yeah. Uh, oh, October Nick's, 3rd. Nick's would have been yesterday. Of yeah, because yeah, he was August. Tyler was July. But it was just out of control. We it's still was perfect before Dylan's wedding yeah. last year. So this is the first year Thanks. that we don't have to worry about weddings for the fall Yeah, in a while. Because it was two years worth. It was my wedding, and there was a bunch of weddings in 2021, and then 2022 had more weddings. And it was just... So was, regardless, you're going to have a lot of time to yeah. hunt. But I'm, yes, I'm going to have a lot of time to hunt. I'm going to devote it to traveling. And I'm going to devote it to filming my guys that aren't running cameras. Yeah. And we just want to make it happen. So this is actually a perfect segue. So we've talked to all the guys. We're going to talk about what we're going to do this fall. And what we're going to do this fall is we are going to put out a new series. So we have a new series coming out this fall. And it's called the Deer Camp Chronicles. This is the first time this has been mentioned. Yep. Huh? yep. We are going to have a new series this fall. We're going to pause SBO Live. So SBO Live has been eight seasons. And I will have episodes up until deer season of SBO Live. But we're going to go a little bit different direction with the Deer Camp Chronicles. It's going to be for deer hunters. It is going to be 15 to 20 minute episodes of what happens right now, the action. It's going to be cinematography. It's going to be good sound. It's just going to be a lot of fun, quick episodes. We're going to try to emphasize some better cameras yeah. during it. Yep. We're going to we're going to throw the GoPros in the trash, and we're going to film everything with DSLRs and mirrorless and our camcorders. And basically, we're going to take the, whenever someone killed a deer, I had five years worth of backstory, one hour video of sheds and trail camera footage and making food plots and bad hunts and this and that. We're just going to throw all that to the side for now. 
And Deer Camp Chronicles is this going to be? We went out hunting. We killed this deer. We had this, and we had a lot of fun. Twenty minute episode, and try uh, to shorten it up a little bit. Yep, shorten just it up. Show good hunts too. Not yep. even killing deer. It's just if you have a good night in the stand. Yep. So the Caleb, footage. Caleb's not going to be on it. If we're going to make it shorter. No. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna. <laughs> we are going to make. Like you know, and, and for 20 actually, minutes. I am going to take <laughs> the SBO live format, and then we'll wait till after the season's over, like January, February, and then I'll do the. Here's the seven sheds we have from this buck and the 4,200 trail camera videos and the six right. years of food plotting because that does all play a factor. And we have a huge opportunity to get all this footage because yeah. you don't work in the fall. Yeah. And, you know, those long videos with the history of the deer, like for a perfect example is your buck from last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Nick's buck from last year is telling a story about the four different deer that he didn't get to kill. They're great videos, and we, we enjoy watching them personally, but... For the YouTube audience and SEO, you know, do they really care that I found a shed in 2021 of the buck Nick killed in 2023? And we're going to kill some deer when deer hunting is good, yep. not in January, like yep. when we killed all our deer last year. Yeah, last year was, a, we had three deer killed in January last year. Ethan's watching TikTok over there. Watching my deer cam. <laughs> Anything good? No. Anything good? No. <laughs> Nothing. I had, a, I had a 12 hour ride to the OBX with Ethan. That's where he has learned yeah. everything about life, is just so you know. If you're listening to Ethan, he learned it on TikTok. I'm a professional bullshitter. So, Deer Camp Chronicles. It's going to be our show this year from SBO Live. Different from SBO Live. It's going to be from Simon Brothers Outdoors. And it's just. And this I'm podcast is going to kind of have some role into that, too, because yeah. we're going to be podcasting after our hunts, especially those days where we have three or four people out hunting and filming and doing all that. We're yeah. going to roll some pod, some live podcasts in, basically. Yeah, yeah, I feel like the ending, you know, you know, every episode at the end is going to have two or three minutes of us just sitting here, just talking. Bullshit. Like we are right now. Talking about what everyone's seen, how mm-hmm. the wind and everything played out, yeah. or how the neighbors affected deer hunt. How or, they were walking their dogs. And if Luke's given up blanks. on deer hunting yet. Yeah, if Luke has given up on deer hunting yet. If, well, yeah, Luke, that's would, a- Luke would shut a doe by then, so... Yeah, Luke will get like the greatest video ever over the shoulder and main cam and a bow cam of him. Of a 36 pound doe. Yeah, smoking a doe. Perfect shot. And then we'll just stop hunting for the next two yeah, months. Yeah, that's good for the year. But he's, dude, Luke's got, Luke's probably in the best shape out of all of us. I, When it comes to the. Bucks. I'm not allowed to talk about certain people having good, good situations, but Luke's in good shape. Yeah, when it comes to bucks Luke's and deer. In good shape. He's we'll see if that's I mean, in good shape, good shape for the next. The group you know, is in good shape. Month and a yeah. half. And Luke's Luke. The, the nice part is Luke's not very selfish. So like, if we have things happening and Luke can't get out of the stand, he, he has no problem with any of us being in his spots. So we obviously share the home farm. You know, Alex has his parents, and then he has his farm. He hunts. Ryan's a, acquired permission, but he's also able to hunt our farm. But then we have outside farms that we've managed to get. And Luke has a good situation where he has a very large outside farm. We call them satellite farms, and we're all allowed to hunt it too. But it's primarily Luke's. So like, we would like him to kill the first nice buck off of it, but which we've never killed a nice buck off this farm. We have it and it's a great farm. We've killed plenty of does. Mm-hmm. Jeez, we've killed plenty of does. We have lots for- of good trail camera videos. I forgot that I got permission to hunt a very large farm, but there's a lot of people and Amish that hunt it, then there's a section of it that is kind of leased. But I have to go and go online or whatever on X or hunt life whatever yeah. it is. Hunt stand. Hunt stand, yeah. Hunt stand. And look at the property that they have and see what I could get into. And it just sounds like it's kind of, it might be a. And that's, that's the nature of the beast around here is, oh, yeah. you can secure this 500 acres, but you have yeah, to share. I want to set up a stand over people. here and there's three other stands over there. It's like, eh, if, is that... it worth the headache or is it not? Well, yeah. that's, that's the game we play. So, but you never know. Those guys might set up a stand and not yeah. hunt there. That's like the, yeah, they might work. not come hunt until gun season. You never know the property where I hunt at the in-laws. There's, I had three stands that I could see from my stand, but as much as I hunted the last couple of years, I never seen anyone out there. So, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, we've fallen trap in the last couple of years to, if we can't have exclusive permission, we don't really mess with it. So we'll be, we've been able to get permission at some farms, 
but just because there's three or four other guys hunting it, we don't put any time into it because we're so used to our home farms and these farms that we've had permission at for the last couple of years. We have car blanche. We can do whatever we want. We can hunt it, you know, any way we want to. If you start sharing farms, it gets kind of convoluted and we haven't taken advantage. But if we kill a good deer on it. Yeah, then what's it really matter? Right. Yeah. Well, and so those three stands that I could see, I kind of stayed away from there if, they wanted to hunt it like i didn't want to be right next to them 20 30 50 yards from them and be right on top of them you know but they haven't been out there and they also gave me permission to turkey hunt over there so probably should have started doing that our turkey season man Man, turkey hunting sucks we had (laughs) yeah but that's not the that's not true it is we had such we had a great turkey season we had, had awful turkey. We season. had two gobblers awful. in range five times, Isaac. I don't know how much you can. I mean, we were dealing. I don't remember same. how many years it's been since I've heard of a good turkey season. Two thousand twenty-one. It is incredible that we were hunting twenty twenty-one. These, these two gobblers that were taking up pretty much an entire block of woods. Yeah. And in that same block of woods, there's seventy deer that live there. Yep. So that's how our numbers of deer and turkey yep. kind of. Yeah, it's kind of if you yeah if you would. It's actually kind of funny. A lot of people would say it's easier to kill turkeys than it is deer, right? Yeah. I can tell you more shooter bucks in that range where those turkeys live than the, than gobblers. There was two gobblers, and there's probably five shooter bucks. So, like, which one is actually easier to kill? The deer. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Here. Now, I know there's going to be guys that live in Iowa that say, well, I got 52 gobblers that roost in my trees. I, I think your numbers drop. They, they, just, they just, they just <laughs> pitch down and just, bah. I think your numbers them. drop. What do you mean? The avid deer hunter to the avid turkey hunter. Oh, it's going to drop dramatically. Tremendously. Yeah. But if you are if you have a good turkey hunting spot where there's a lot of turkeys, yeah, let's for example, the gore farm where we didn't hunt yeah, this year. We didn't hunt at all. Ugh. Yeah. Also What's going on, on with what you call right avid? Yeah. So there's a lot of people that deer hunt a couple days a year or I mean, maybe even 10 days max. Yeah. But then there's people like us that might hunt 100 days. Uh, yeah, but there's there's more guys that hunt five times for deer than five times for turkey. Tenfold. That, yeah, that's I would true. say tenfold. But there's way more deer than turkeys. Because yeah, these, these two gobblers we were hunting... And they would move half a mile every day and cover yeah, we, four yeah, different we, we properties. Would, we would hunt them on. <laughs> we were hunting them every day on two different properties that were like not connected. three quarters of a mile apart. We would hunt them on the fly down on ours, and then we'd move. We'd get in the truck and drive around. Yeah, we try to get ahead of them. Hunt them over there, and then they one of them ended up getting killed by our half step cousin. Yeah, is that the way you? Is that the way you? That is, sounds uh, very. Is that how it would be? It's like a third well, cousin just, of ours. Our so Brandon, Brandon's it's our, our third kid. or fourth cousin, and it's yeah. his stepson. Yeah, it's, so it's, like, his, son. It just it's his stepson, but it's his right. son. It's yeah, his, it's, it's right. just it's easier. Just but, another cousin. Yeah, so a cousin. You and guys it? have more cousins than you have, have so many blades <laughs> of grass in your yard. That's factual. That is, that is the truth. <laughs> That's factual. We did also skip trout camp, just so you know. Yeah, so we haven't talked about the two trips that we collectively, us that are sitting here in this room, took together this year and it was trout camp and it was shark fishing so we can start with trout camp shark fishing is on the tv right now so well, if you see us looking left it's because we're watching our wives in bikinis yeah they're bikinis like right now our faces all our wives them. are in bikinis uh, i'll just splice a video in ryan just slapped, <laughs> slapped his <laughs> wife's ass <laughs> that's a good view of my i mean my face is all over the computer <laughs> so i'll show that for the group real quick just pointed to it and so, that's how she made a baby but no trout camp this year was Amazing. It was amazing. It was an anomaly. And and it was, we split it up. So it was Alex 90 actually, degrees Alex, on a mountain. We went golfing. Yeah. And we Alex, swam in the river. And Alex was not at our trout camp. No, he was not. He usually a week is. later. So, to preface, how do we how do we even start trout camps? Give a short history of so trout camp. So, I mostly went with the older guys. Yeah. So, a short, was, a short history of trout camp before we start talking about it so people uh, understand. We started going... Long time ago, Horner Pavlix got in love. Fifteen with, years ago, yeah, got in love with the area. We invited all our other friends who were also kind of friends with the Horner Pavlix, but then that. everyone else started going. And then now there's like a large group of people from around here that go. Large group. So we go to the same place every yeah. year. In 
I guess the Allegheny National Forest is how yeah, you can say it. Allegheny National huge Forest, place. Pennsylvania. And so Alex ended up going with the old guys this year because of his dad and his kid and a bunch of stuff, which is fine. We split the camps up because there used to be a hard opening for trial camp, and now there's not a hard opener. So it's so we kind of pick a random weekend yeah, that works we best. Kind of just, yeah. Well, we were all, we all going to do the same weekend, then it kind of yeah, it, changed because circumstances. But circumstances and Easter, there's everything. a holiday in there and the whole thing. Yeah, we yeah. waited till after Easter. It's early April, so we go to trial camp sometime between the first weekend of April and the third weekend of April, and we had to juggle it around Easter and turkey season in Ohio and turkey season in West Virginia. So, like our group, we have the Gore Camp, so we go to West Virginia. So we had to, there's just a lot of outside factors. So we found a week this year that worked for the most of us. Alex didn't go; the rest of us did. He went the following weekend. We cook. We caught a lot of fish. I don't know how many you guys caught, but we, we did caught. pretty well. Yeah, it was. Compared a, I think it was to the year before. Yeah, I caught one fish the year before. So, <laughs> and the weather. The weather was the weather immaculate. Was, it was hot. Yeah, uncomfortable. Too hot. It was too hot. Definitely unordinary. Yeah. So mid Pennsylvania in April, sometimes it's snowing, and this time it was ninety degrees. We've had trout camps in the snow. It was ninety. Yeah, where we're camping yeah, in the 90. snow, and the tent, the snow is collapsing your tent in the middle of the night. We've been there. So when I got down there Thursday, it was still pretty warm. I was in a cutoff in our waders and fishing in the big river there off the campgrounds. But then it cooled down. It rained a little bit. Nothing to not keep us out of the water. But we did pretty well. We went. You sent us some snaps of you, you and your boy. Yeah. I, some good trout. Yeah. I caught a big rookie. Then he caught a couple good little brookies and he caught a sucker and he was fishing with my dad so it was cool yeah. then we went way the other side of the salmon and it was a long drive but definitely worth it if you guys could get a driver to get you over there because since the road's closed yes yeah, so you got to drive all the way get around. a driver what does that mean <clears throat> Pick the best one. <laughs> Be responsible. Yeah. Responsible. I, I could tell we, you, you know, one driver actually... that I wouldn't pick. Who? Well, <laughs> no, 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 no. I would pick me over over Matt. Yeah. Over Matt, yeah. because yeah. we almost so, all died. A little sideways over a mountain. So if anyone ever, I don't even know how much we can talk about this. We can talk about whatever we want. We can talk about whatever we want. Nice. Matt Spaniel one time decided to drive us home from the bar, and it was not good. But it wasn't because he was drunk. He was laughing, and then he closed his eyes. Yeah, we were. We had a whole bunch of shenanigans. Yeah. And, uh, in the end, my we truck don't condone. ended up in a ditch. Going I had broken ribs. The problem is, the problem well, it is, it has, it has given Isaac ribs. literal PTSD. Isaac has no longer. It's been two it's years since this happened. Yes. Isaac has not been able to drive with other people in a car since. It gave if, him. If actual, I'm driving in a car, even on just a normal country road, I'm hanging on actual to the PTSD ocean bar yeah. from that. Because we almost died. <laughs> we did almost die, but we you didn't know, die. And we it was almost so died. funny. It. It. it was so funny. Right like, I laughed what so the fuck hard. are they doing? I laughed so hard. So right. I don't think I've ever the laughed. The truck. I don't think I've ever laughed as hard as I did that day. I laughed and then I was scared. <laughs> yeah. He's been scared and ever two since. Two years later, I'm still scared. <laughs> we kind of laughed for a second, like, oh, they're kind of messing around. And it was just like, on the trucks in the ditch and going like, 60 miles an hour and we bounced out and no harm no foul trout camp's awesome check out trout camp the movie this year it was a pretty good time. so they yeah. say so you should have put an x-ray of your ribs on there yeah oh right. ryan broke his ribs not from matt being a bad driver <laughs> or an opportune driver matt, rain ryan literally fell down the steps at our cabin because it rained we ran into the cab normally we tent camp at a campground and it's a lot of fun and we set up a bar, we have a food tent, we have campers and camp tents and the whole nine yards. The weather was really bad a couple of years ago, so we decided to rent a cabin. We rented a cabin, it was really slick and rainy, and Ryan fell down the stairs and broke some ribs. Well, icebergs super, blew through the campground yeah. bigger than terrible. the table that's in yeah. front of you. He literally broke Oh, yeah, we ribs. couldn't camp because yeah, the campground was closed. Yeah, there was no camping. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The yeah, Army yeah, yeah, Corps yeah. had there was to nothing rebuild it. it. There was nothing fun about There's it. There's chunks of ice this thick. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Ryan's left with physical damage, and I'm left yep. with emotional damage. <laughs> that can't be yeah, emotional that year, damage. That year was a problem for everyone. It was, <laughs> and the weather was shit. And then I don't think we caught any trout. No, was Nick 20, almost drowned. Yeah, 2022. Nick, I have a that video. A I'm going to show the video right now. Year. Nick, bloop. 
drowning in the he river. does claim that Best he caught video. his monster yeah above water yeah. but I don't believe it it's there's some river i was off the coast of virginia in the navy still it was a great time so that was 2021 so 2022 was good or that was 2022 no, that was 22 I 23 hurts. was good last year was very good speaking of 23 we'll move on to our next trip the one that's playing on the screen right here to our left you guys can't see it but we can the shark fishing trip. we did do a podcast about this but we basically yep. just talked about the fishing yeah. aspect of it we can talk about the fun aspect we had 14 people together in a house for a week and it was awesome oh so awesome. No, no one fought I mean, there was one. No, no, drag, we talked no. about how Alex got drugged out of the bar by his ear one night. But like, I mean, if was, you had a tub well. of sour cream, you were suspect. But <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, <laughs> but it was just a little what a what an awesome time. It was a great time. We love you, Annie. And the weather was perfect, and the fishing was good. Yeah, we caught the biggest shark we've ever caught in our lives, and a couple other sharks. So why we? There's nothing to complain about. I would I would have liked. I'm very mad about two things, and we talked about it in the shark fishing podcast. I wish. Ethan Shark, the first night would have been landed. Yep. Even though Ryan touched it and yada, yada, yada. We I wish we would have got that one up on the beach just to see what it was. We think we, it was a black tip. Could have been a spinner. We just couldn't take any cool pictures. But could have been still a sandbar. He touched it. And then that last night, something was taking our bait. And it was probably small, but it would have been cool if it was big and we didn't. It was just click. click yeah. Big enough to take God, a, a trout head this size. Yeah. yeah. So the oh, yeah. Head. Giant two. It was this big yeah. or two and a head? Sorry. There's or nothing the wrong with being camp, small. Totally. Trout camp. What'd you say? So there's nothing wrong with being small. <laughs> well, so and Ryan will have memories about this forever because he impregnated his wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, she said no. She, she was, was pregnant. She was pregnant. Yeah. Oh, before that. Okay. Yeah. We had no idea. Let me tell you about the birth dates. <laughs> but let me tell you guys, if you've been trying, it works. So when is she due? When would? Uh, March. End of March. End of March. End of March. So that's a good, be, time. Uh, good it's time. It's a good time. Yeah. Except for trout fishing. <laughs> yeah, except for trout fishing. fishing. Oh, it's and you're, you're, right. now that you're got, now that you're a Chatham pass. Fire Department member, you got to help with pancakes. So like, oh, oh with that, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, you'd be pancakes. serving pancakes at the birthday parties. Yeah. <laughs> so, the shark fishing trip went well. We caught a lot of sharks. It was a lot of fun. Made a cool video. Made a very cool video. The longest video that we've ever actually made. How long was it? Hour and twenty nine minutes. Wow. And it was pretty, it flowed very well. Yeah. It was just good. long. A little just bit. Long. But it's long, but it's okay. It's a yeah, like movie. We have 14 people there for a whole week. It's going to I am going to throw long. this out there, though. If we didn't have Isaac with us, oh, I yeah. don't think we would have half the experience. That's, that's, that's everything we do. we got to have Isaac there. Otherwise, we just. Isaac, well, because I always up. get crazy about watching YouTube videos and learning how to do all this shit. And then. And He's a pseudo expert. He's not just the goat foot, he's a <laughs> pseudo expert. I, tr- I try to do I try to give everything we do justice. So that's what we had to do. Yeah. Sorry. So you're that's so everything. Good, <laughs> that's everything current. Um we could talk about. And now we're in the end of summer, we're coming down to hunting. That's yeah, what... like so we got the new show coming. Uh, Isaac's getting ready to leave. You know, his his time out west will be its own separate thing. It will not be the Deer Camp Chronicles. It'll be his Western series. He's got a couple guys. Actually live. Him. My Western video posts in 32 seconds. Yeah, 32 nice. five yeah. o'clock. Oh, yeah, there's a new movie coming out in 32 seconds. There is one small glimmer of optimism that Caleb holds on to. It's not hunting related, but Aaron Rodgers is no longer oh, part football. of his life. Yeah, we, talk, uh, we can't uh, talk about football just, here. No, we're really, like, yeah, we can talk really about sports. Really hoping for Jordan Love. Listen, all I know is podcast. Aaron Rodgers yeah. the other day in the, dual prodca- in the dual practice got sacked and went like one for three and then went three and out. And, uh, just Jordan throwing it out Lo- there. Jordan we all Love, might have to keep it out on. Jordan Love had a touchdown year. drive. Jordan Love had a touchdown drive. It looked pretty good. He threw a Perfect nice touchdown. Timing. Yeah, sure. we're good. Perfect timing. We're good. My We're at 46 want. minutes. So. And uh, that was supposed keep to be it rolling. Yeah, 25 minutes. If you, any no, we'll of you guys are bourbon guys, we got some stag. This is no longer stag junior. This is batch 18. They got rid of the junior. Yep. Full on stag. Oak so, profile. This is some high end shit. When are we going to open that? When so we buck shoot kill. a buck this year, first buck? you will see this bottle. No, start that, to that's going to be. <laughs> that's a, this that's a very nice high buck. profile. Aluminum cans here. <laughs> so if you're watching this podcast on the YouTube version or even listening, we're going to have the Deer Camp Chronicles and a lot of the episodes. I would say three quarters of the episodes are going to be ending here in this shop, the ones that we're not out of state. And we have a very large allocated bourbon selection that we're going to be cracking into during that. Uh, we have a couple of guys that collect a lot of bottles. So we got a lot of good stuff in the back there that you'll see in the videos. Some guys might take 
and think that's pretty cool. Some guys might not have a clue in the world what's going on. And there on, may but... be a lot of mayhem in it. Yeah, there's. Oh yeah, no, there, there will be mayhem. If we end kill... of the night after a oh, yeah. deer track buck kill, it's gonna be a little interesting. If we kill some good deer, it's gonna get pretty wild up here in the shop. So this right now, where if you guys are watching, this is the deer shop, obviously, and you know every hunt that's in the state of Ohio is gonna end here. If we're out of state, there's gonna be camps other places, and we're you know obviously Indiana, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. We have our defined camps that you're going to see in that new show, but we're going to have a lot of episodes of that right here. Most even if most guys podcast will be recorded here, started here. Yep, yeah, even if guys aren't hunting here, they're going to be here at the end of the night. We'll talk about it. Their deer might be hanging here. The only other place we're going to podcast from in Ohio is going to be my basement, which is not quite done yet. But it's well, you might pretty be mobile close. when you go out of state. Oh yeah, when we're out of state, there will be yeah. podcasts in all those states from a picnic table, from the you know our Airbnb, from the cabin. The Gore Camp is going to have a nightly podcast. Probably we'll have a ton of podcasts from the Gore Camp, I'm sure. But yeah, which we need to get a podcast done about that before we yep. get down there. I don't believe at this point you guys have heard a podcast from the Gore family, but there will be one, and it'll be a big one. Spaniel will be here. It'll be a lot of fun. It'll be a very long one, probably, because that's some good shit, to be honest with you. Some yeah. heart found memories in that one. Oh, yeah. So that's our updates for now. Yep. That's the first Shop Talk podcast. Uh, thanks for listening. We appreciate it. If you guys are listening to this podcast, that means deer season is either here or real fucking close. So. And I'll Fuck drink yeah. to that. Or throw your I'm beers up. be a father. Yep. Throw, yep. The, throw your beers up. Deer, deer Shop, Shop Podcast. Podcast. Out. Out. Yes, Deer Deer Shop Podcast. We gotta come up with something. We gotta come up with something. Something like that. It's the chat. Thank you. It's the chat and chat. I'm sitting right here in my ear talking. Uh, we gotta call it the, uh, the BS and the BS. But so Deer Shop Podcast.